Hey, welcome to Eco Ask Why. All right, we've been asking for the war stories, and you came through. And this is this is going to be a fun episode. Okay, so we got from behind the curtain. We got him out, so you can actually see his face. The man, the myth, the legend, Adam Sheets. And welcome, Adam. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> man, I'm so excited. So excited. So Adam and I, we worked on every Eco Ask Why episode from the beginning. He's been my right hand man. Tell me when I screw up. Tell me when I do good. When I screw up more often than good. But anyway, <laughs> so we're having the war stories. We've been asking them. And Adam's, I, I've, I've got them. And we made a rule that I wouldn't read them. So I would get them and I'd send them straight to Adam and Andy. Shout out to Andy. We know, You know, we love you, girl. And they would take the war stories and they were just holding them. And we're going to put a couple of these episodes together. So this is the first one. So this is my first time hearing a lot of these and Adam's going to share them with me and we're just going to have some fun going through some of these war stories that you all submitted. So Adam, who's up first? All right. So this one is from Bobby, who's an automation engineer uh, with a system integrator. And so his story starts off this way. It was 4th of July in 2007 and a very popular non-wovens textile factories calls him. And the call goes something like this. Our plane is down. We're in, this plane is located in San Antonio, Texas. It's a profi bus issue. We need your help. Get on the plane. Come over. He had just gotten to his parents' house, which was in Virginia, and he was in, finally enjoying a holiday off uh, for once. And so right. he spends a couple hours on the phone chasing down these issues, trying to do the best that he could, troubleshooting it from that perspective. And in doing so, kind of fast forwarding to the end of the story, they actually fixed the problem via some connectors and some resistors being moved um, from a wrong spot and back and forth. So they were able to get this machine back up and running. They, th they thought that it was all the same issues. And he actually has an anecdote in here. This is why it comes back to actually giving good fault diagnostics when you build mm -hmm. a control systems. But nonetheless, 5 a.m., 4th of July, 2007, he has to get on an airplane from Tennessee and mm -hmm. fly to San Antonio, Texas and walk in and start dealing with the, the touch screens. So I don't know if you've ever experienced any of this, Chris, but um, you know, being as a distributor, do you have any personal experience of running into these types of, of issues where everything goes down? Yeah, I mean, I've seen it firsthand. I've been on the other side of the phone from a distributor standpoint, supporting that engineer, that system integrator, who, you know, the heat's on, right? I mean, you're in the moment, the spotlight is shining and there is no way you can get out from underneath it. You know, I, I'm just thinking about a story right now where there was an engineer that, that I work for at eco, he shall remain nameless. And <laughs> they, it was a, it was something with the PLC program. And when they, when the code actually ran for the first time, it shut the, it shut the process down. And I, mm. Like the mill went down. Like, he went outside. I think he threw up. I'm pretty sure he did throw up. He went back in and fixed it. But I mean, the heat, you know, in those moments when you get to those phone calls, it's on you. I mean, you got to step up and own it. It sounds like Bobby in this, in this case, in this scenario, he, he got that phone call and he had to step in. That's right. So I'm picking back up the story here because, uh, we're not done with it. So he gets to the, the HMIs, starts evaluating the problems. The safety won't reset. They got Profibus errors from the alarm history, not active alarms. I think they were confusing alarm history and active alarms. Mm -hmm. So another side note, HMI developers make it, make that clear. Don't put them all in the same historical alarm area. Make two different ones, history mm -hmm. and active alarms, please. A little trick. He very much emphasized that. Anyways, in doing all this, he walks around to the hopper and he opens the door. And he looks at the safety switch because the safety will reset at this point. And although the door will crank in via the Acme screw, it's bottoming out, but you can still push the door in. So then he says, there's no way that that safety switch is making. So he opens it back up and he looks at the Acme threads and he sees that there is non-woven fiber 
around the threads that is causing the screw to bind up and not tighten all the way. So he takes out his ballpoint pen, cleans the threads of the screws, pushes it back in, hits the button. That clears it. That cleared it. <laughs> that was it. That was the problem. That was the problem. That was amazing, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, that was an expensive, that was an expensive trip to uh, fix it with the ballpoint pen. <laughs> That's right. I mean, he even goes on to say that the production manager comes out and says, what did you do? What did you do? I mean, keep in mind, he's been there less than 20 minutes. And right. so he's like, guys, I just cleared all the alarms, cleaned out the screw. Right. Then cranks right back up. Right. So he goes around and keeps, you know, making sure everything's okay because he's there. And what was so frustrating, he says, is that this production manager, when he was on the first phone call to tell him to get on that plane, he said, we'll pay whatever it takes to get you out here. And then he finds out it was a fiber in the screw. I uh, just think that's hilarious. That is hilarious, man. I'll tell you what, I mean, that's a lesson learned the hard way. Uh, you know, I've, I've heard of stories too where motors trip at, at a sawmill. This came, I got a lot of sawmill stories, but anyway, and it, it, it kept tripping. And this was after an outage, by the way. So that's an mm. important part of this one. And the motor kept tripping and they, they got so mad. They're like, why won't this motor run? It's supposed to run like, but it kept tripping out. And so they finally went out and they looked at the load. And what happened was they were doing maintenance on the carriage during, during the outage. And somehow the chain had got welded to the frame. So there's literally, it was like, you know, it was a mechanical lockdown position. They're like, it won't go anywhere. So the motor, I mean, oh, man. you could have put a thousand horsepower motor on that thing. It still would have locked up. Right. But it's anyway, it just goes to show, man, it's the, sometimes it's the mechanical, the point of that, why that story came up is because it's the mechanical issues. Like in this case, that there's so many times the finger pointing happens. It's mechanical, it's electrical, it's mechanical. And, and sometimes it could be either, but you know, you need to really take troubleshooting and validate each step. So that great story there. Thank you, Bobby, yeah. for sending that one. Yeah, for sure. And it, it, it just goes to show too, in a pressure situation, you right. have to take a second and just breathe. That's right. You know, and, and go through all the little things. Cause it took Bobby coming in, you know, fresh set of eyes and not yep. having as much of that panic. Um, that's right. I'm sure everybody else was feeling there. So that's right. You can be too close to it sometimes. You really can. Right. So cool. Well, that was a great, that was a great story. Thanks, Bobby. Absolutely. So here's another one. Okay. I got one from, uh, Polo. He's a channel manager at a major manufacturer. And he says earlier in his career, when he was a sales engineer, uh, up in Ohio, he had a customer, customer of his, uh, in the food and bev industry called him after hours, six 30 says, Hey, our injection line is down and we need a servo. So he kicked it into high gear, called the distributor account manager. And, um, you know, he jumped in his car and drove out to the customer site to just be physically there to see how he could help. Right. By the time he got there, he saw the president of the company under the machine trying to fix it. Now he continued to do his thing. He was on the phone with the coordinator. He was uh, of the motion specialist and technical support. He was trying to orchestrate everybody. But what he wanted to take away from this major piece is even though they got everything up and running and fixed, mm -hmm. um, he was so impressed by the president of the company turning wrenches, trying to fix this thing. And he says that that really speaks to the um, leadership uh, of just servant leadership. Yeah. And so that's what he wanted to call out there. First thing that's come to mind when I heard that story. Again, this is the first time I'm hearing these. Um, Jocko Willink, Extreme Ownership. And hmm. he, he speaks about directly, you know, being that owner and, and, and owning it from, from soup to nuts. And, and it sounds like to me, this pre was it the president? Of the company he was the president of the company yep <laughs> i mean that's that's pretty like he's up there right i mean and and now you know complete humble you know serving serving others and, and getting down and, and and making it happen so i mean that is what manufacturing is all about i mean you, you got to strip the titles away at right. the end of the day you know um 
the company that that values its people and it recognizes that hey we we got to make the best product the most competitive you know that all the things that are you know working against us and we come together and i tell you another thing that's a pressure packed situation and he could have handled that so many different ways man <laughs> like yeah. that could have went really bad but like this that shows the the character of that person for sure yeah well the other thing that stands out to me is you know we've interviewed over 100 guests now through our right. podcast and uh, everything that I've heard um, talking with both end customers, people who started out as a customer and have now gone to the other side of, you know, either in manufacturing or distribution or whatever. Um, what has always stood out to me is how it's very much a family atmosphere. When something goes down, it's all hands in and everybody just right. does what they need to do in order to make it get back to right. the right state. Right. So that really stands out to me a lot. It just speaks to the industry. It does. It does. I did see something the other day, though, that said, you know, manufacturing is more like a community, you know, not to, not a, they actually pointed out not family because, you know, there could be a lot of dysfunction in family, but, uh, you know, well, you can't fire them, right? <laughs> that's right. Think, that's right. Yeah, I remember that. You can't, you can't fire family. That's right. <laughs> but just community pulling all together, all hands on deck. I mean, but that's a great story. And just sounds like that company is, is definitely got the right leadership and, and the leadership sets the culture and, and, and the vision and where they're going to go. And sounds like I'm sure they're going to be doing wonderful things in the future. All right. So the next one that we have here is from Tim Warbler at TW controls. Uh, he submitted a video. So what we're going to do is we're going to play that for those of you who are watching those are on audio. Um, you're not missing much, just a few little funny graphics that he has across the screen. So I encourage you to look at that if you can, but, um, all right, Chris, I'm gonna take it away here. Okay. I once put a tractor trailer on its roof with a jumper wire. And while it wasn't as dramatic as this, it was still very dramatic and very scary. And there's an important lesson to be learned here. So it started out like so many projects, you know, I had the components sitting on the table and I wanted to do some testing, you know? So yeah, I've got a jumper wire and I'm jumpering over and it's like, okay, yeah, it works, yeah, it works. Trying to work my code out. And then we mount it all on the machine. And now we have actual switches and buttons and things that we're supposed to use. But I love my jumper wire on there just in case. So this machine was supposed to clamp the cab and rotate at 90 degrees. And you hit the button, clamps come down, rotates 90 degrees, you hit another button, and it rotates it back down. I saw something that was concerning when it rotated one of the times. And instead of hitting the button like I was supposed to to make it do the whole automatic process, I still had that jumper and I reached over there and just hit that jumper and that cab started rotating up. Where do you think it's going? Nowhere good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this, this is, I'm like, okay, let's get, let's Tim get ready to say here. All right. And when it got to about 70 degrees, I was just like, something feels wrong about what's going on here. And I realized, oh my goodness, I forgot to clamp the cap down. <laughs> and so I killed the e-stop and the thing was about here. And it just slowly ticked over and then bam, it crashed down on the ground. Now it's a funny story, but I use this story in my class a lot when I have somebody eager with a jumper wire, because if somebody had been standing there, I would have killed them. So watch out for those jumper wires. Man. First of all, if you're listening to this and you're not following Tim, stop what you're doing right now and go follow Tim. I mean, that that's number one, like TW controls the stuff that he does the industrial sorcerer. He is amazing. That story. I mean, have you seen, I don't know if you've been to, uh, any plants or manufacturers who have that type of process like he's talking have you ever seen a tractor trailer being unloaded that way no i've i've personally gone to more uh, manufacturing sites and so i've seen some of these massive machines you know stamping yep. and all oh, that yeah. kind of stuff but well, so i know the that, scale but yeah but it's like when you see like a tractor trailer like like he's talking about because i've been se several pulp mills and things like that i've seen them chip chip mills and that's how they unload the trucks. And like, I've always thought mm. about like, like what if the dude left his Mountain Dew in the cup holder, <laughs> you know, cause, <laughs> like, cause that truck literally goes 90 degrees. I'm like, no way in the world. You know, uh, it's just, it just, it's pretty amazing when you look at it. But I mean, Tim's point, you know, first of all, 
do your simulation, do your testing, you know, do all that stuff up front. There's so many simulators out there, but you know, you got to just extra due diligence when it comes time to actual implementation, you know? And I also think that may be a good point, like he's mentioning too, have another set of eyes behind you and looking through, you know, some of that as you're going through, um, never hurts. But I mean, it's a great story. Glad nobody got hurt, but I mean, That's leave right. it to Tim to like, the way he sets up all his videos just captures you right, right out the gate. Yeah. You know, yeah. I flipped the truck with a jumper wire, you know, like what? <laughs> Uh, I love that guy. Love that guy. All right. So we have uh, another one here uh, from Jackson. He is an instrumentation and automation controls technician. Okay. And he said, we were having trouble with uh, a drive and it would randomly stop, but we didn't see any faults. Weeks would go by and eventually I noticed an an inverter thermal overload factory limit fault. Now that's a mouthful. It is um, a mouthful. Okay. So it was getting hot. Yeah. Looks yeah. like it. We made some adjustments by calling the manufacturer and they helped him do some motor tests. Uh, he changed the parameter and we stopped getting the fault. And a little week goes by and it happens again. Okay. At this point, they've already changed the drive. And so they decided to change the encoder. After doing that, they noticed uh, an issue with the cable. The cable is then fixed and the fault goes away, but the drive is still having issues. So he decided to call multiple people um, from programming contractors to people within the company. No one had a foolproof plan. So he calls the manufacturer back and they helped to a point, right. uh, but they would get stuck again with no no progress. Right. This had turned into a 12-hour day of no production. Mm. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. So they changed the motor and they went back to the original drive just to see if they were missing something. Right. Still nothing worked. So he called the manufacturer again and it turns into a four-hour conversation and he was speaking directly with the manufacturer's engineers at this point. Right. They noticed parameters didn't look right and they would make some changes. And they were constantly uh, stating that stuff didn't look normal and things are happening, but they've never seen it before. Mm -hmm. Finally, they ran some more tests remotely on his computer to the drive and boom, just starts working. 16 and 16 hours of downtime and trying to get this thing back and going. And that's what it was. So he was asking them, what was it? Yeah. And he says to this day, he still literally doesn't know how it was fixed. And he was terrified that nobody could fix it, but it's working again. So, uh, scary stuff, but he's glad that the nightmare's over. <laughs> I guess I'd rather be lucky than good. Right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I mean, wow. I mean, it's, you know, and I've been on that side where you're talking to technical support and you're trying to figure out whether it's a PLC, HMI drive, you know, whatever that piece of equipment is. And it, it can feel like you're, it takes forever. And I know that a lot of times those technical support, you know, they ask a ton of, you know, kind of elementary questions because you got to rule out, you know, the basics first, you know, that, that mm. there's, there's, there's logic to troubleshooting, you know, and, and, Right. Unfortunately for Jackson, it doesn't sound like at the end he knew what that logic was, but I mean, I'm glad they were able to get it. I mean, it sounds like it was definitely something with some of those parameters that just got, got way off. And when you start making that many changes, it can really be hard to stay on top of where, you know, where you were, you know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, I think they did a great job of going back to the original to see if they could push it through because it didn't matter what they were putting yep. in. It was still causing the same issue, but still, um, it doesn't seem that he ever got to know what, what was going on. Yeah. That, and that can be as the, as an engineer or as, as someone that's just in, naturally inquisitive, that can be frustrating. Right. I mean, you want to, I mean, that's how we get better. We we take a look back, we learn from our stakes, we make those adjustments, we move forward. And you know, when you don't have that data to look back and say, okay, here's what we did to fix it. That can be definitely, that can be challenging for sure. Right. That's a cool story though. I mean, I'm glad you got it going and 
you know, Jackson is uh, sound like he had some uh, some good experience at the end. It just took him 16 hours to get there. <laughs> right. That that's scary to see how you know that's a full production day right there. Yeah. Gone. Two, yeah. Yeah. Day and a half. So Adam, they were they were four great stories, man. I, I, we were definitely hoping to get some good ones. We we definitely did. So you know, I I can't thank the, the listeners enough for the people who submitted them. Thank you. You know, and if you're listening to this right now, we're still working on more war stories. We we want to have more of these out there because this is where the rubber meets the road. You know, manufacturing isn't always perfect. Things happen, but that's okay. You know, we learn, we can share, we can laugh, we can grow together. And this, through sharing these war stories, I think that's where the growth happens. So check out the show notes. There's links there. You can connect directly with Adam, with me, to give us those submissions to Andy. We're all right there. You can connect with us directly. And we really want to hear them. I mean, and think about the stuff you tell at you know, a, a dinner party. Or you're going out and you're sitting around you know, in the summertime by the pool and you're thinking about something that's funny that happened. That's the stuff we want to share. You know, we would get it. We want to get that out there. So check out those show notes and for that. And if you like an eco ask why and the stuff we're trying, you know, we're trying straight talk. We're trying um, war stories. Of course, we had the ideas, the heroes. We had the panel discussions. Let us know what you like, but then also share it out. You know, Adam puts a ton of work. Andy puts a ton of work. They, they really spent a lot of time making sure that we're providing everyone out there value. So share it out with your friends, with your network. Give us a five-star rating. Give us that review. That makes all the difference in the world. And just remember to keep asking why.